I am Carrie Shimmerin Irvin, an accidental entrepreneur, a nonprofit founder, a proud mom, and a crusader trying to change the fact that poor children in this country are getting a pretty raw deal from our public education system. And today, I'm going to recruit you to help. There is a way that people like you and me can make a difference in the quality of public education right now, and I'm going to tell you how. We make a promise to children in this country that they'll get a good, free public education that will prepare them for a successful and productive life. But the sad reality is most poor kids in this country don't get that kind of education and don't get that chance. Only 8% of kids growing up in poverty today will graduate from college, compared to 54% of their more affluent peers. But I'm not here to talk about statistics. I'm here to talk about kids. This is Maya. The odds are stacked against her. She's got an uphill battle to get the kind of education she needs to get to and through college. Here in DC, if Maya's going to go to public school, she has two choices, or her family has two choices. She can go to the traditional public school. That's the regular old neighborhood school. There's one in every neighborhood. Many of you probably went to one. I did. Or she can go to a public charter school. In a minute, I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. But first, I want you to know that in D.C. right now, 44% of kids go to public charter schools, not their neighborhood school. In New Orleans, it's 80%. Nationwide, almost 2.5 million kids are in public charter schools. But you know what? I'm not here today to advocate for or against charter schools. That's not my fight. I believe in good schools. I'm an education reformer and a strong public school advocate who thinks we need to be doing better for all kids right now. Charter schools are not the only answer, but I have a reason for focusing this talk today and for focusing my work on charter schools. The reason is every public charter school is governed by its own independent board, and that board has the opportunity to make a huge difference in the quality of that school and the opportunity it offers to kids like Maya. All kids need great schools, and charter school boards are helping charter schools be great. Okay, a minute to go over some facts, because I know there are a lot of misperceptions out there about public charter schools. Charter schools are public schools, just like that neighborhood school down the street. They're funded by tax dollars, yours and mine. They are free. Charter schools do not charge tuition, and they are open enrollment. That means any child who lives in the district is allowed to attend. Charter schools cannot administer a selective or competitive admissions test. If more children apply to attend a charter school than there are seats available, the school is required by law to hold a lottery to determine who gets to go. So those are the ways that charter schools are just like other public schools, but they're different in some critical ways. First of all, every charter school has the autonomy to decide how to teach, how to organize and operate the school, and who gets to work in the building. Charter school teachers are not unionized in most places. Charter schools are held to a higher standard of accountability. They can be closed by the authorizer if they're not providing a good education. And finally, charter schools, as I said earlier, are independently governed. Each charter school, publicly funded, is a nonprofit organization operating outside the public school system. That means charter schools are buffered from the winds of politics and elections and they have the time and the space and the luxury to do what we know works for kids, organize around a clear and compelling mission, and implement effective educational programs consistently over time. They don't have to throw everything out and start again when a new elected official comes in and appoints a new leader for the school system. When charter schools first started, they were all about choice, right? Giving parents the opportunity to opt out of the system. Well, a lot of people, including me, were very concerned about that. How is that fair if the kids whose parents are the most motivated or who have the wherewithal to find a better school leave? Won't the most academically talented and the more affluent kids flock to these charter schools and leave the neediest kids behind? That's not the way it turned out. 20 years into the charter school movement, charter schools are educating a higher proportion of kids from low-income families than traditional public schools are. And charter schools now attract support from all across the political spectrum, including from a lot of people who've come to realize that actually what's not fair is that parents like, say, me, have a lot of choice about where to send our kids to school. And some parents have had only one choice, that traditional public school down the street. And in low-income neighborhoods, that traditional public school is very likely to be low-performing. And anyway, if you're running those schools that families are opting out of, 
shouldn't you be spending more energy worrying about making your school so good that nobody wants to leave than about the injustice caused when they do leave? That's exactly what Kaya Henderson, who runs DC Public Schools, is doing. And last year, more families chose to come to DC Public Schools than the year before. That's a good thing. We should all be working to make all schools good. Charter schools offer a lot more than just a choice. They offer a different leadership model. Charter school boards set vision, drive strategy, bring skills to the table, and insist on results. OK, the moment you've all been waiting for. Who sits on these charter school boards? Charter school boards are made up of volunteers, citizens, people from the community who care about making a difference for kids, people like you. Three and a half years ago, I was a mom who'd been at home with my girls for 10 years on what turned out to be an extended break from my career in education policy, teaching, and reform. I was ready to go back to work, and I decided I wanted to devote the rest of my career to trying to make sure that every child has the chance to get an education as good as the one that my kids are lucky enough to get. So I started talking to people in the education reform world. Hey, what's going on in the last, you know, 10 years since I left? And I was invited to tour a charter school, which I had never seen before. So I invited my husband, Stuart, to come along. He had coincidentally just joined the board of another charter school. We were impressed by this diverse school with its incredibly engaged and energized student body, and a school community built on high expectations and college prep for all, which is a lot more revolutionary than it sounds. We met another guy also on the tour named Cedric, who works in private equity. It turns out Cedric was also looking for a way to get involved in public education reform. Like me, he was grateful for the education public schools had given him and wanted to find a way to give back, particularly for kids who need it the most. So four of us went out to dinner, a private equity guy and his wife, my corporate lawyer husband, and me, a lapsed education policy wonk looking for a way to get back in and make a difference. And we started talking about this charter school board my husband had just joined. Well, that's interesting, said Cedric. Tell me more. I like this idea of being on the board of a public school. I didn't know public schools had boards like this. Hmm. So we started wondering, why don't more people know about this? Why doesn't, why doesn't everybody know about this? It's DC. People love serving on the boards of worthy nonprofits. And many of us are flattered when we're asked to join the board of our children's independent school or private school. How can we get the city's best and the brightest, people who want to make a difference and who have valuable skills and talents, to join the boards of public charter schools? And that is how I accidentally became an entrepreneur. We decided to take that idea and make it happen. With Cedric as our board chair, a friend of mine and a fellow education reformer named Simmons Letra and I founded a nonprofit called Charter Board Partners. We are dedicated to recruiting great people like you to serve on the boards of public charter schools, giving you the information and training you need to be really good at it, matching you with schools that need your specific, exact, unique mix of skills and expertise, and helping boards understand both their serious leadership responsibility and the incredible opportunity they have to make a difference for kids. We started three years ago with three schools. We're now working in over 22 schools, serving 9,000 kids, and 75 people are serving on boards because of our work. Thank you. And we're getting calls every week now from all over the country, other cities with a lot of charter schools that want us to come. Let me show you what this looks like. This is Kendra. Last year, she applied to one of the best charter schools in DC. It's a really cool school. They teach through hands-on interdisciplinary learning expeditions. The school goes from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. And last year, they graduated their first ever class of high school seniors. 100% of them were accepted to college. 80% of them were the first in their family ever to go. For years, this school was bursting at the seams, spread inconveniently across two campuses, making do with a playground stuck on the roof and cramped spaces. 1,500 students applied every year for 26 spots. Kendra didn't get in. The school had identified a new building that the city was willing to let them have, but they didn't have the leadership to take that leap. We helped this school add people to the board with the skills and experience that were missing. A lawyer who specializes in negotiating loan agreements, a strategic planning expert with a background in education, a finance whiz, and another private equity executive with experience in fundraising. 
Like all nonprofit board members, they were volunteering, donating their time. No school could ever afford a deal team like that, right? Within one year, that transform board secured the new facility, renovated it, and moved the school in. And now, that school has all of its students under one roof for the first time, with a huge playground and 40% more students who will have the chance to get a great education and go to college, including this year, Kendra. This is TJ. TJ attends a charter middle school that focuses on the three A's, academics, arts, and athletics. He is super engaged in his learning, and he is thriving. He plays on the baseball team, he plays the cello, and he gets great grades. But TJ was worried about where he was going to go to high school when he finished at this middle school. At the high school, the traditional high school back in TJ's neighborhood, 16% of children are reading and doing math at grade level. 16% compared to 71% at this charter middle school. The board of this school realized that unless they could expand to include high school, kids like TJ were at risk of going back to schools like that and losing the ground they had gained. We helped this board add people with the skills and experience they needed. Today, TJ's in 10th grade at the same school. He's still thriving, and now he's captain of the baseball team. Not all charter schools are great. A lot of them are not. This was a school that also had a really compelling mission, but a very different story. Fewer than 20% of kids in this school were reading and doing math at grade level. That's less than one in five. The board was desperate to keep the school open. They knew the school was going to be closed if things kept going in that direction. And they poured lots of extra resources and interventions and everything. They did everything right into the school. And after the school gave it its very best shot, they did succeed in improving the quality of education and it, they jumped from 19% of kids proficient to 34%. That's a big jump, but you know what? Two out of three kids in that school are still not getting the education they deserve, the education they need to go to college. So this board did a very courageous thing. They closed their own school. They gave up the charter voluntarily, and because they exercised proactive leadership and relinquished that charter voluntarily instead of waiting to be closed down, they were able to negotiate a merger with one of the best charter schools in the city, guaranteeing a spot for every student from this low-performing school in a high-performing school. The leadership of these boards and others like them is changing the odds for these kids. So let me recap. Traditional public schools are not doing a good enough job yet, providing the education that all kids need, particularly kids from low-income families. Charter schools offer a different way of running schools. They have boards. And those boards offer the leadership that schools need and opportunities for people like you to come in, use your talents and skills and things you know how to do to make schools better. Great boards are helping schools get better and changing the lives of children. I propose to you that by serving on the board of a charter school, you can add meaning to your life by changing Maya's life, by using the things you already know how to do, the skills you already have, the people you know. As my husband said, if you're better with a spreadsheet than with a hammer, you can build a better future for kids by serving on a board. As an education reformer and as a parent, I know that every child needs a great school. I care a lot about great boards, but it's because I care a lot about great schools. Charter schools are independently governed, and that fact offers one of our best hopes right now for changing the odds for kids who are in school right now. So I am working hard to make sure that every charter school has the strong and strategic board it needs to make sure every child gets a great education. And you can help. Will you? Thank you.